Now that is crazy and it should make the PC world shudder. G'day everyone, welcome to Ben's Breakdown, where I break down the technology or it breaks me. So the M1 MacBook Pro and M1 MacBook Max have finally debuted. And despite coming with an incredibly hefty price tag, there are some pretty exciting things to talk about. So let's start with the physical changes Apple has brought to these new M1s. Content creators all over the world rejoice. At last, they have brought back the ports. No more dangly dongles. <laughs> these laptops have almost every port you could hope for, with the exception of an ethernet cable. There's a HDMI port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, MagSafe 3 port, three Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, and most notably for me, is the SDXC card slot. Now, ironically, Apple has spent the last three years taking things away from their computers. And now that they've given them back, they want you and me to give them a big thank you. Well, I won't do it. Thanks. Next is the displays. These two laptops have set a new benchmark in beauty with the world's first 14 and 16 inch Liquid Retina XCR display. This screen has a sustained brightness of a thousand nits, which is twice as bright as my MacBook and twice as bright as my Legion 5 Pro. But that's not the brightest this diamond will shine. While viewing HDR content, it can hit a peak brightness of 1600 nits and it does so with a billion colors and a million to one contrast ratio. The other advertised feature that may intrigue gamers is the 120 Hertz ProMotion display. But upon closer inspection, I think this promotion, the publicizing of a product organization or venture so as to increase sales or public awareness, sounds better than it is. On Apple's website, they clarified that it's an adaptive refresh rate of 120 hertz, whilst the fixed refresh rate are capped at 60, which is still better than what it was before, but a bit of a disappointment. Now, out of this whole announcement, what impressed me the most, if Apple's claims hold water, is the performance these new M1s are getting at a substantially lower power draw than the competition, which thankfully Apple did list in their presentation. So the M1 Pro and M1 Max with their 10 core CPU were compared to an 11th gen i7 found in the MSI GP66. According to Apple's test, the M1 Pro had 1.7 times the performance of the i7 whilst consuming less power. Now, we don't know what these tests were, but I've been using the GS66 Stealth with the same Intel i7 CPU for the last week and it delivered a Geekbench score of 1,488 in single core and 7,366 in multi-core. With some simple math, here are the scores we may theoretically get, which isn't too far from the alleged Geekbench leak found on Mac rumors. But where things get real juicy is in the graphics department an area which previous iterations of the M1 left a lot to be desired. Here, they compared their 32-core GPU to the RTX 3080 found in the MSI GS76 Raider, and not only did it come pretty close to the 3080's performance, but it did so using 100 watts less power than the 3080. Now, what's truly amazing, if accurate, is it does this whether running off mains power or on battery. Now that is crazy, and it should make the PC world shudder. As I've said before on this channel, Apple software optimization takes third-party hardware beyond what the PC equivalent was able to deliver. With the graphical grunt of an RTX 3080 paired with Apple's optimization and power efficiency, this could indeed be the most powerful content creator laptop ever made. And if you've got a spare kidney to sell, you just may be able to afford one. A big thank you to all of you who have subscribed. And if you want to see more tech news and my thoughts, leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next one.
that's enough falling laptops for the day.